coming up on Renewed Mindsets. We like doing things our own way. As a people, we do not like to submit to the authority of another. But what about to God? What does it mean to fully submit to God? I'll tell you when you submit. Or right now. Let's go, boys. Hey, welcome to Renewed Mindsets, the totally awesome podcast for Gen Xers who are ready to bust a move with the hand we were dealt. I'm Rick, and if you're feeling discontent with the way life has turned out, well, we're the goonies you're looking for. We're here to guide you in purging what you think you know, breaking free from conforming to this world, and transforming your mind into the Christ-centered powerhouse it was destined to be. Comb that mullet and grab a can of new Coke. It's time to get radical, dude. I'm so glad you're here. So I was asked what it means to fully submit to God, and I've been mulling it over. And honestly, that's a tough question to answer completely. But for me, I think it means surrendering your will and desires to God and trusting in his plan for your life and seeking his guidance and direction in all things. It's about letting go of control and allowing him to work in and through you. I also believe that fully submitting to God involves obeying his commandments and living a life of love and service to others and constantly seeking to grow in your relationship with him. It's a daily surrender of your whole self to his will, not just in words, but in actions and attitudes as well. In my study, I happened to notice, of course, Peter, famous for trying to do things his own way. And that takes me to some scripture from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. We should humble ourselves under God's mighty hand so that he may lift us up at the right time. So I view submission to God as a form of self-discipline because it involves denying ourselves the power or the privilege that we desire. So instead of trying to control people or situations, we choose to submit to the authority and the wisdom and the power of the Lord. Now, a lot of times this means submitting to other people as if we were submitting to the Lord. Now, Peter, Peter, let's talk about Peter a little bit. It's logical that Peter would encourage young leaders and all of us to submit to God. He had to learn this lesson the hard way, through pain and failure. Poor Peter. In his early years of following Christ, he often spoke before thinking or tried to assert himself over others in order to gain an advantage. He even had his own plans for things, including Jesus' messiahship. How do you like that word, messiahship? It took Peter several years to mature to the point where he could willingly let go of his self-centered ways that had that brought him success as a fisherman. So, I mean, you can't really blame him. He was operating in the way that worked for him. But instead, he chose to submit to the leadership of others, especially Jesus. Peter learned well from Jesus because Jesus was humble. And his humble example on the cross was probably the biggest teacher to Peter. He learned to be humble in order to achieve greatness. Yeah. His humble devotion to the Lord was evident in the book of Acts as he submitted to James and Paul and the civil authorities and others. Tradition says he was martyred by crucifixion, and he insisted on being crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. But Jesus also submitted to God. It's not surprising that Peter needed to practice submitting himself to God. What truly surprised me is that the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, also lived in submission to God. Jesus didn't try to force things to happen. But instead, he listened to the Father and relied on the Holy Spirit. He consistently surrendered situations to God. Now, undoubtedly, this was how he lived as a young man in in Nazareth when he conducted his business as a carpenter. 
Like, what would his mission statement have been? It came from the Bible, seemingly in an unforeseen situation. Let's read about that in Luke chapter 4, 17 through 21. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found a place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Or how did he know where to go to next in traveling ministry? Or who to choose as his twelve apostles? He spent extended hours in prayer listening to the Father. We see that in Mark chapter 1, 35 through 39, and Luke chapter 6, 12 through 13. Why did he do what he did? He answered, This happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Luke chapter 4, 21, John chapter 17, 12, and 19, 24, and 28. And how did Jesus perform the wonderful deeds that he did? He preached with charm and brilliance and ministered to the down and out and also to the up and in. He healed people abundantly, and he called disciples to follow him. Jesus explained his actions, saying, I can do nothing by myself, but only what I see the Father doing. John chapter 6, verse 38, and 12, verse 50. Even more shocking is to witness the Son of God humbly submitting themselves to both people and circumstances as he does unto the Father. He willingly submitted to individuals ranging from John the Baptist, you know, a, a man who consumed locusts and wild honey, to Pontius Pilate, who despite his hand wringing and washing, ultimately ordered Jesus to be crucified in order to appease the crowds. You know, instead of crafting a new eloquent mission statement, Jesus accepted one from a scripture scroll handed to him in a synagogue. Now, throughout his life, Jesus consistently embraced the challenges before him. He allowed events to unfold as he surrendered himself to the will of the Father and listened to his guidance. Whether he was facing storms at sea, being approached by those in need, witnessing his disciples abandon him, or experiencing the betrayal of Judas, Jesus continuously demonstrated his obedience to his Father's plan. We need to turn outcomes over to God and practice submission. Abandon outcomes to God. Submitting to God in any situation means not trying to manipulate others or control the outcome, but taking responsibility, primarily to love God and others, and trusting our sovereign Lord. Now, there's other disciplines that are related to submission to God that can be beneficial in various aspects of our life. Now, these disciplines can help people cultivate a deeper connection with their faith and develop self-control and patience and seek guidance from others, people who can help them grow spiritually. The first one, <laughs> silence, especially for listening to others. You know, James taught that by controlling your tongue, you can control your entire body and person. By practicing silence and listening to others, we can show respect and empathy and understanding towards people around us. And that can make stronger relationships and promote peaceful interactions and a sense of unity, which is so important now. We must have unity. And then there's waiting or you know, refraining from making a decision or advancing on projects or pursuing dreams until you're directed by God. You know, by waiting for guidance from God, we can ensure that our actions are aligned with His will. And that can lead to greater fulfillment and a better success rate with our endeavors. Let's move on to being prepared for potential trials and praying for the strength to trust in Jesus and respond like He would. 
by watching and praying, striving to find joy in the Lord during difficult times and learning from them to become more Christ-like. You know, being able to do that, to have that discipline, encourages people to find joy in the Lord during those difficult times and to learn from those experiences and to be become more like Jesus by watching and praying. We can cultivate resilience and spiritual growth and have a deeper connection to God. And the fourth one is something that you've heard a million times in church, and you probably don't really know what it means because the majority of churches out there fail miserably at it. The world calls it mentoring, placing yourself under the care and guidance of another person to an aid in your relationship with Jesus. But what that is is discipleship. You know, by submitting to the guidance of a mentor or a spiritual director or your pastor, you can gain valuable insight and wisdom and get a perspective that can help you navigate life's challenges and to overcome obstacles and to deepen your faith and to learn how to be like Jesus. So by practicing disciplines like silence and waiting and watching and praying and seeking spiritual direction or allowing yourself to be discipled to, people can cultivate that deep connection with their faith and develop self-control and patience and seek guidance from others who can help them grow spiritually. And those kind of disciplines can make individuals live out their faith in a meaningful and impactful way. And that leads to a more fulfilling and purposeful life. It's easier to listen to our sinful nature and follow after it rather than to submit to Christ. It's more difficult to submit to God, but it's the right thing to do. And as Christians, the Holy Spirit can help us submit to God. Now, since the Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity, He is God. The Holy Spirit can help us to submit to God by obeying Him and following Him. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. The fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Cultivating these fruits of the Spirit can help us better submit to God. By submitting ourselves to God, we're letting God know that He is the Lord of our life and that we love Him more than anyone or anything else. And we often think we're capable of of, of being on our own to fight our own battles, but we need God's help. It's not possible to fight our battles without the Lord. We need his help and guidance and strength. The Lord loves to help us on our battles and give us relief. The battle is the Lord's, and he can help us no matter what we're facing. But submitting to God means that we've got to be willing to give up everything for him and to follow him. Jesus tells us, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Denying ourselves can be hard on a me-focused world. But with God's help, we can do it. Submitting ourselves to God doesn't mean that we have one foot in the door of following Jesus and one foot out the door of following ourselves. It's vital that we go all in and follow Jesus completely. This is the only way that we can submit to God fully. Denying ourselves and following him both must be done to submit to God. Without these two aspects, we're not truly submitting. And think about all the things that take up your time each day. Are they all focused on God? Are you doing your daily activities to the glory of God? Are you choosing to follow him with all your heart, even when it's hard? Now, most of us would say no to at least one of those questions. It's important that we truly submit ourselves to God by giving up our own wants, by choosing to intentionally follow him and living our lives in the knowledge of Jesus. The more we focus on God and follow him and serve him, the better we'll be at submitting ourselves to God. Focusing on God means we try to see God in every circumstance we're facing. Now, whether that circumstance is sad or joyful, 
We need to focus on God and his great love. Hebrews tells us, 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him he endured on the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Just as the author of Hebrews tells us, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus and focus on him. Following Jesus is so crucial to submitting ourselves to God. When we follow Jesus, we're truly obeying his teachings. Following Jesus means we obey him and put what he said into practice. The Lord tells us, if you love me, you keep my commands. John 14, 15. In the same way, serving God is equally important to submitting ourselves to God. By serving God in our actions and our choices and our lives, we're demonstrating that Jesus is the true Lord of our lives. Acts of service to God attest the truth that God is worthy of all our worship and our praise and adoration. Submitting ourselves to God needs to be done every day. Submission to God can't occur once in a while or when we feel like it. But rather, submitting ourselves to God needs to be done daily with every fiber of our being. When we submit ourselves to God, we'll live a much more joyful life. God is the creator of our souls, and we're going to be the most joyful when we're serving Him and following Him. And obeying him. A life of hopelessness stems from a life that's not focused on God. In addition to a more joyful life, submitting ourselves to God also helps us to resist the devil. James 4, 7. Resisting the devil means to turn away from the things of this world and resist them. The Bible is clear that Satan is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. The Bible is also clear that we can't be friends with both the world and God. If we're friends with the world, then we're enemies of God. This is why it's vital that we resist the devil and the temptations of the world. James 4.4 The Bible promises us that if we submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, the devil will flee from us. James 4.7 Therefore, by submitting ourselves to God through following him, focusing on him, serving him, obeying him, we can resist the devil and live a life to the glory of God. You can choose today to resist the devil and no longer listen to his lies. Instead of listening to Satan and the world, choose to listen to God and submit yourself to him. God loves you unconditionally and will never, ever change. With God, there's only light and love and mercy. Submitting ourselves to God will lead to a life of pure devotion to God and a joyful life in worship to the Savior of our souls. If you're finding it difficult to submit to God, pray to Him and ask for help. The Lord hears every prayer, and He answers in accordance with His divine will. 1 Peter 3.12 and Romans 8.28 God can give help through the Holy Spirit's work in your life. Submitting ourselves to God can be hard, but when we do submit ourselves to God, we'll live a life to the glory of God. In honor of Independence Day in the United States, and now, Deep Thoughts from King George III. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, I just want to tell you about an incredible podcast that has truly impacted my life. It's Christ Alone Podcast. It's not your average show. It goes above and beyond to combat false doctrines that twist the true message of God and the amazing character of Christ. It's hosted by two friends of mine, Stevens and Angie, and each week they equip you and empower you and encourage you for a world that seems to be moving further away from God every single day. 
You can find their episodes and all their resources at ChristAlonePodcast.com. And they're available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, so it's real convenient to hear them wherever you are. Join me and countless others that join in every week to listen to Christ Alone Podcast. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Dive deep into truth and let the transformative power of Christ lead you towards a brighter future with Christ Alone Podcast. Once vigorous measures appear to be the only means left of bringing the Americans to a due submission to the mother country, the colonies will submit. The word submission gets a lot of bad press, and it has for a while. Thanks to attacks on the biblical idea of submission, Christians and non-Christians alike have come to think of submission as oppressive. When the topic comes up, the world points to Ephesians 5.22, Wives, submit to your own husbands, with a warped sense of that text. Or we think of leaders. Hebrews 13.17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Which is truth, except it gets twisted to where especially non-Christians would say, well, your God would have you submitting to Hitler. That's not really what that means. It reminds me of the movie The Avengers and Loki, and he wanted to rule the earth. And there's a point in the movie where he forces a group of people in Germany to kneel before him. Is not this simpler? Is this not your natural state? It's the unspoken truth of humanity that you crave subjugation. The bright lure of freedom diminishes your life's joy in a mad scramble for power. For identity, you were made to be ruled. In the end, you will always kneel. Okay, you've heard the speech. Truly submitting to God and Loki's speech about subjugation in the Avengers are fundamentally different in nature and intent. First of all, one's voluntary and the other's forced. Submitting to God... True submission to God is a voluntary act. It's a voluntary act of love and trust and reverence. And it involves willingly giving one's life to God's will, knowing that he has our best interests at heart. But Loki was about subjugation. It's about enforcing submission through fear and domination. It involves stripping people of their freedom and dignity against their will. The motivation for submitting to God is rooted in faith and love and a desire for a deeper relationship with God. It's about seeking guidance and purpose and living a life aligned with divine principles. But Loki's motivation is self-centered. It's driven by a desire for power and control and ego. It's about elevating himself above others and imposing his will on them. Now, submitting to God leads to spiritual growth and inner peace and a sense of purpose, and it fosters community and compassion and moral integrity. But Loki's subjugation results in oppression and fear and resentment, and it breaks down community and it breeds hatred and leads to suffering. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I know Disney owns all of that, but that's Star Wars, not Marvel. Let's get back on track, Rick. And what it all boils down to is the character of the leader. God is loving, just, and merciful. And his leadership is characterized by sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice. 
and a desire for the well-being of his followers. Loki was manipulative and power-hungry and malevolent, and his leadership is characterized by selfishness and a disregard for the well-being of others. So really, true submission to God is an act of love and trust, leading to positive spiritual and communal outcomes. While Loki's concept of subjugation is about enforced control and leading to negative, oppressive consequences. We are never called to submit to someone under those kind of circumstances. Hey, you don't know how much I appreciate you listening to this podcast. And if you're listening and you're regular, do you know that I have a second podcast? It's called Wisdom for the Day. You can find it at wisdomfortheday.org or right here, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Just do a search for Wisdom for the Day. It's basically a daily podcast from the book of Proverbs. I read about two verses a day and do a deep dive on those two verses. Now, when you say deep dive on two verses, it's only going to be about five or six minutes. So you don't have to devote your whole life to another podcast. As much as I appreciate you listening to this one, I really want you to listen to the next one. And I don't want to take up all your time. So give me five minutes. You can listen to that while you're shaving. You can listen to it when you first get in the car and waiting for it to warm up or cool off, I guess now, since it's going to be summer. I'd appreciate it. If you like it, let somebody else know about it, too. That's wisdomfortheday.org. I love you. See ya. The executive producer of Renewed Mindsets is Yelena McClellan. The associate producer and spiritual advisor is Kimmy Shirley. Special music by Weston McCurry. Well, that's all for this week's show. You know, the name of this show speaks my hope for you. It's taken from the words of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. If you enjoyed what you heard, do me a favor, please, and tell someone you know about it. Send them a link and a text. You know, you may even need to download it to their phone and show them what a podcast is. If it was valuable to you, it will be to them. Visit RenewedMindsets.com to hear past episodes, read the blog, and check out the new merch. And as always, while you're there, send me a voicemail by clicking the button at the bottom right corner of the main page. Tell me what you think about this show. I just might play it on a future episode. Until next week, I'm Rick. I love you. See ya. The intro and outro music for the Renewed Mindsets podcast is Are You Ready? by Floodgate. From the album, Are You Ready? Copyright 2002, Offbeat Ministries Incorporated. Floodgate can be found on Apple Music and iTunes. Music used with permission. Avengers! Assemble. No! The executive producer of Renewed Mindsets is Yelena McClellan. We have two openings for other producers. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com forward slash renewed mindsets for more information.